Good evening and welcome to OUC Uncut. I am your host, Naomi Parchment, and we're doing something special for you this week. This is OUC Unplugged. So wherever you are, whether you're in your kitchen, in your living room, join us, worship with us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to praise and worship your name wherever we are, Lord, wherever we feel. We thank you that you are always with us, Father. And as we praise, we pray that you inhabit the praises of your people, Father, that people may come to know you and gain whatever they need in you. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities, and Jesus, your.
Father, who are we that you are mindful of us? We're thankful that we're not just servants of God, but he calls us friends. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Can you sing with us tonight? It says this. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Come and say with me. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? It's true that you are thinking of me, how you love me, how you love me. It's amazing. amazing. Let's go out and say, I am a friend of, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. So glad you call me friend. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. That's good.
these bones will sing. Cray, are you Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, and these bones will sing. Cray. How is everybody doing tonight? How is everybody feeling tonight? 
happy Sabbath, happy Friday, happy everything, happy whatever you want to be happy about, man. As y'all can tell, I am excited. I am ecstatic. I am happy to be here with you all tonight. I want to give a couple shout outs before we get started. I want to give a quick shout out to Naomi Parchment for allowing me to be a part of the uncut service tonight. I also want to give a shout out to Pastor North and Christian Lawson for extending the invitation for me to be here with you all. I, As y'all know, I'm excited. Um, and I'm also just excited for what you guys are doing in this place. This thing is so amazing. This thing is so uh, 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 Holy Spirit filled to the point where I don't even think we really know how much God is really working and what is going on right here, man. This gets me hyped because it's things like this that really keep us grounded. It's really things like this that keep us connected to God in the midst of our circumstances and our situations. How much so is that this year has been so crazy that, but in the midst of that, we still have things like this where we can come and worship and we can come and hear a word from God and we can still come in here and hear songs of praise. This is just so amazing. So I want to give a great shout out to everybody that's a part of this service, to everybody that's a part of this uncut service team. And also, I want to give a great shout out to everybody that is here tonight watching this service because God is doing something great. And with that, we're going to get straight into it, if that's okay. Tonight, we're going to be in Genesis 50, 20. If y'all could turn there for me, please. Genesis 50, 20. I'm going to give y'all a couple seconds. All I can give y'all is a couple seconds to turn there. So here we are. It says, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And I'll read it one more time. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And with that, my message for tonight is entitled, The Best is Yet to Come. Yes, sir. The best is yet to come to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being in this place. We thank you for what you are doing and what you are going to continue to do. And right now, God, I'm praying that you just be with me. Fill me with your spirit and speak through my mouth right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this time that we have. And let somebody walk away blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, all right, y'all. Real quick, before we get into everything, I want to give you guys a little synopsis, a little summary of what I'm about and who I am. You know what I mean? It doesn't hurt. My name's Q Hayden, junior theology major at Oakwood University. Y'all already know, man. Um, my father's a pastor, son of Melvin Hayden the third, grandson of Melvin Hayden the second. I'm the fourth. Um, I love basketball, as y'all can see. I got the basketball jerseys behind me, man. And as you also know, I watched the NBA Finals. That just happened. LeBron James won his fourth final. We out here, man. This is amazing. But then also one thing about me uh, that some people don't know is that I love movies. I love movies. I feel like every time I speak, I say something about a movie. But uh, I had a roommate. His name is Caleb. He put me on. He loved movies, too. He wants to write movies. He wants to do cinema. And so pretty much he was always watching the movie. And that got me thinking like, yo, I, I like movies too. Let me start getting into the movie game. So I started watching more movies. And one of my favorite movie series is the Marvel uh, uh, movie series. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much about, you know, the Marvel comic superheroes made into a cinema, made into a film. And throughout this uh, a movie series and it's continuing from the from the beginning to the last Marvel movie. We see this grand scheme. We see this uh, big plan. We see a pattern in a sense. I know I did, and I feel like somebody else in this place might have also. But let me also just let you know what that is. The pattern that I began to see, which was kind of obvious in my opinion, was that you have the superhero. And then you have evil on this side. And evil would always go up against the superhero. And to the point where we would always think that the odds are stacked up against the superhero. 
And then we get to the point in the movie where we feel like all hope is lost. And we're like, what is a superhero going to do? He's going to, he's in his backs against the wall. He's in shambles. He's too, and he's in too deep. And then we begin to then see that throughout the movie, we see that, uh, this hero begins to find another source of power or he might find a, a new element or whatever it might be to elevate himself to be able to defeat the evil. And as I began to see this pattern, I really didn't see a difference from the movie series from the Bible. And what do I mean? I mean that we see stories and we see characters that odds were stacked against them, but we see them prevail with the help of Jesus Christ. We see them prevail with the power of God. And one of the characters that I want to focus in on and I want to even just stay on tonight is Joseph. And that's where we're all right here. We're here in Genesis 50, 20. And before we get into this encouraging, powerful verse, I want to go back, if that's okay, and give y'all a little quick summary of where we're coming from, of who Joseph was in the first place, and how did he even get to this point? So right now, here we are. We have Joseph. Joseph is uh, uh, a boy. He's a male. And he is found with favor from his father, uh, uh, with his father. So much so that his other brothers get so envious, so jealous, so filled with anger about this situation that they even want to kill their brother. But they don't kill Joseph, no. Instead, they sell Joseph into slavery. And as we see the story begin to unravel, we're like, man, this this isn't cool at all. Like, Joseph really going through it right now. All the odds are stacked up against him. And we then begin to see Joseph begin to do a little better. He's working as a slave. He's doing good. And then we see everything become uh, brought back into shambles. Everything begins to crumble back down. And then he is falsely accused for something he didn't do. And now we see Joseph here in prison. And then bless the Lord, because then after this little bit of time, we then see Joseph then growing back up into the rankings after he's able to fulfill and interpret a dream. With the help of God, of course. And as we see this, we then begin to see the power of God. We begin to be able to see the source of uh, of an almighty God begins to flow through Joseph because all we do is see Joseph elevate. And so much so that he's that we're able to see in Genesis 50, 20, where it's now saying and being declared that, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. I want to let somebody know in this place that evil will do whatever it can to take you out. Evil will do whatever it can to keep you down. But I want to let you know right now, I want to encourage you right now that the best is yet to come. We can just see that in the story of Joseph. And somebody out there in this place is like, how can I relate to a person like this? You can relate because you can put the situations kind of side by side and see what I'm talking about. The inequality that we're seeing today, the COVID uh, uh, virus that's going around today, a grand pandemic. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I'm in a prison of my own. Just being in my house, locked up, having to wear my mask. Of course, I want to wear my mask because I want to be safe. But at the same time, it's, I feel cooped up. In a sense, I know I'm not in the same prison Joseph was in, but I know my struggle. I am struggling. I am going through it. I feel like I am in a pit and I feel like evil is just coming at me from left to right. And I know some of us might feel like we got it all together. We might act like we got it all together. But I just want to let somebody know in this place that we don't got it all together. Not on our own anyway. And then also, as I begin to see this unfold, I then want to also stay on the point of one major thing. That it's going to answer somebody's question that's saying, how do I know God is working? How do I 
feel that God is working? How do I know that the best is yet to come? What I want to let you guys know is, is that we must be ready. We must be prepared for God's moving. A lot of times we're so stagnant and we're so stuck in the mud in our situation. But I don't feel like that's what God wants us to do. What we see in the story of Joseph is that we are seeing Joseph continue to grow. We see him being continually faithful. We, begin, we, we see him be trusting God continually and always. We don't see him begin to waver. We don't see him moping in his grave. We don't see him stuck in the mud and feeling like there is nothing left for him and he's just going to sit here for the rest of his life. Instead, he makes sure he makes sure that he is ready for the movement of God so that when it is time for him to interpret that dream, when it's time for him to be able to save the people from famine, when he's able to change the uh, the hearts of his brothers, he's able to do so. Not because he is powerful, but instead it's because God is powerful because he's the one that is continually pouring into him. But he had to make sure that he was ready to receive it. I know for me anyways, a lot of times I always complain like, God, where are you? I can't feel you. I don't know how you're moving in my life. Like, where is my better days? And it's not more so that he doesn't want to give it to me. It's just that I'm not ready to receive it. A lot of times we need to be prepared. We need to be ready because when God moves, if you miss it, that's your blessing. You don't want to let your blessing go out the window. So make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you are reading your Bible. Make sure you are in relationship with God so that when he takes that step, you can take that step right after him and follow in his lead. Because God says, I have something great for you. I have something better for you because the best is yet to come. But if you miss me, if you miss me, You'll miss out, on the, miss out on the opportunity to be able to be blessed and be able to ultimately save others and bless others. And then somebody else out there is kind of thinking, how can I relate to Joseph? How can I see myself in that same situation? I can't, I can't relate with this man. But I want to let you also know about another man. The man that came down to the same earth that we are living in and even to the point where he took on sin itself, took on the whole facade, the whole body, the whole mindset of man and has gone through everything that we have been through. And this man is Jesus. Jesus came down to this earth and lived the exact same way. He, 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 he endured the exact same things. Brutally beaten, brutally spoken to, hurt, brought to pain, felt like he couldn't keep going, felt like he was struggling. But at the same time, Jesus knew the plan. He knew and understood the will of the Father so that when it came time to then sacrifice himself as a living sacrifice and, and, and be crucified on the cross and wrongfully accused as an innocent man, he was able to do so. Not because he was strong, because at the same time he was human, don't forget that, but at the same time he knew the will of his Father and he was getting strength from heaven above to be, to be able to keep going. And he was able to move hand in hand with God's plan because he was ready. And he also understood that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Somebody needs in this place to keep on repeating that. The best is yet to come. For me, the best is yet to come. For my family, the best is yet to come. Because I refuse to let Jesus' sacrifice hold me a uh, uh, bondage. I will uh, refuse to let Jesus's sacrifice go in vain because on the third day, this is it right here on the third day, the best came. You see, the best was yet to come, but on the third day, the best came that day. 
And Jesus rose from the grave and he was the atonement and ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And so much so that we can have eternal life. A free gift, a free gift, hear me here, a free gift of eternal life if we just believe in Jesus to be the Son of God and accept Him into our hearts. Y'all, the best is yet to come. Your best that is yet to come might not come tomorrow. My best that is yet to come might not come in a year. But I don't care about all that. I don't care about the timeline. I don't care about when or where. At the end of the day, I'm going to stay faithful so that when God moves, I am ready. So that when God puts his hand and wants to anoint me and call me for something, I am ready. And does anybody in this place want to be ready? Does anybody in this place want to be prepared for what is yet to come? Is that somebody's prayer out there? Is that somebody's plea out there? Because God wants to move in your life today. God wants to be able to pull you out of a pit. God wants to be able to reveal things to you today, tomorrow, next year, the year, and so on. But we got to be able to accept it. We got to believe that. What he says he will do, we have to be able to believe that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. And so I just want to leave you guys on this. Remember this. The best is yet to come. Evil will do whatever it can to take you out. The world will do whatever it can to hold you down. But the best is yet to come. Evil, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call it, will try to take you out. Evil will try to hold you down. But the best is yet to come, somebody. The best is yet to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for overcoming death and sacrificing and sending your son to be able to be an ultimate sacrifice for our sins so that we may be able to have eternal life. So we might be able to look forward to the best that is yet to come. We thank you for being a mighty God. We thank you for doing amazing and marvelous things. We thank you for being a man in your word. So Lord God, as we wait, help us to be patient. Help us to Understand and know that you are coming back with a mighty plan. At the end of the day, if I don't get gratification, if I don't get the glories of this world, I don't care about any of that. Because all I want is you. And all I want is to be with you in glory and be able to be in relationship with you forever. And I can wait for the best that is yet to come. Lord God, we love you. Forgive us of our sins this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.